All right. This has been and still is one of the most uh, headache part of uh, for manufacturer in deciding, you know, what kind of material should be selected, you know, to suit a certain functions, you know, and so on. All right. Now, as you know that most of the time, well, all of the time, okay, when a manufacturer or original equipment manufacturer, OEM, okay, when they produce a certain product, the product, first of all, must be functional, right? The product must be able to comply, you know, what they promise you, such as uh, this particular computer, you know, has a certain uh, level of RAM, has a certain amount of ROM, you know, what kind of graphic card, you know, then you, you will expect is it, if it's a built-in uh, graphic card, then you won't be expecting, you know, that beautiful graphics, you know, and so on. But if it's a, with an uh, individual graphic card, you know, depends on what brand it is. So probably your expectation will be higher. Okay. So that's why from, you know, you're buying a, a laptop, you know, uh, the laptop prices can be varies. All right. So first of all, it must be functional, must be able for you to use for your, let's say, your daily uh, work, you know, like doing assignment, you know, and so on. Uh, watch a little bit of movie, you know, listen to a little bit of songs, you know, and so on. Or with a built-in speaker, you know. And, uh, but of course, when it comes to built-in, you do not expect it to be, you know, uh, with sound surround sound, you know, with uh, what, uh, Dolby systems, you know, and so on. Uh, unless you are paying for it. Unless the system, actually the computer actually claim that they have that then probably you have to pay for a premium price for that kind of products and then your expectation will definitely goes higher and higher and higher all right so uh, but all in all okay um a manufacturer generally con uh, uh, responsible to put the products together okay with their selection of of technology wise design wise one thing but material wise is another okay and a lot of cases that you will find that a lot of these products consist of okay uh, material from various categories means that there are more than one type of material is being put together for example let's say your automobile okay your motorbike now, a motorbike or, mot or your car, basically, you have something like the, the, the body is made from metal, okay? The, the rim is made from metal, okay? The engine, the shaft, you know, and so on, all the mechanical parts, you know, movable parts, mostly is made from metal. Some of it is made from plastic, like, for example, your dashboard, your meter, you know, and so on, is made from plastic. Your let's say this uh, car, you know, the, the handle opener, you know, and so on is made from plastic, okay. And uh, some of the part why they they use plastic because probably you don't don't have to actually uh, provide so much strength for that particular part. It's just for you know showing you know how what is the RPM of uh, your vehicle. It doesn't have to be you know metal, you know, and so on. But we would like it to be metal because it's stronger, you know, and so on, more like worth it, you know, and so on. But however, uh, the price might, might, might be different since uh, and, uh, a more expensive material is being used. And also, it might contribute to, let's say, uh, the weight of the car in overall actually increased due to that. So you don't complain about the fuel consumption is too high, you know, and so on. Because your car is generally more heavy, you know, if everything is metal, you know, all those kind of uh, titanium alloy, you know, and so on. If you want that, no problem. You have the money, no problem. They can make one special edition for you, okay? So, all in all, it has to be assembled to a reasonable level of products with a reasonable level of quality, with a reasonable level of performance, reliability, you know, and so on and so forth, so that you are happy with that particular products because in the end you do not want uh, the manufacturer also do not want to to to, to face this kind of circumstances that uh, the material basically spoil before this uh, warranty is even ended now because if that happened before the warranty ended you know the company basically has to bear the repair costs you know and so on so the best is 
after it it spoiled just right after three hundred and sixty five days, so that it spoiled and then the the warranty basically over and at three hundred and sixty six day you cannot claim. So probably you are thinking about repair, but you have to pay, or you are getting a new unit. But of course, okay, they about of course they don't do that, okay. But they can do that, but they don't do that because they do not want to let you have this feeling that this product can only last for one years, okay. So in the end, what kind of material that they are using, just like a plastic. Tupperware, you know, a plastic container, you know, and so on. You can buy it from the two ringgit shop, okay. But you can buy, you know, another brand. It's called the Tupperware. You know, the price can be varies by a lot, okay. So what? Why is that so? Because of the material that they are using is different, okay. You can feel it when holding the products, okay. That this thing is more premium. It seems like it's more durable, but however, the durability depends on how you are going to use it. You know, if you drop it always, you know what kind of premium material also will not be good. Okay, so in the end, the combination is very important. So in this, okay, material selection, what we are looking for is the functionality of that particular material that is going to contribute to that product. Okay, if let's say you are like, well, you are riding a motorbike, you know, and so on, so you'll be wearing a helmet. So the helmet, what's the purpose of wearing a helmet? First of all, is to prevent the police from summon you, right? Because if you do not wear a helmet, the police is going to give you some sort of summon that you have to pay a level of penalty. But despite that, safety issue. Okay, now what kind of safety is that? Because they are afraid that if you are okay on your motorbike, if somebody actually face an accident, you know, and so on, it, there might be a risk of okay, uh, the the head is being injured, you know, and so on. So you must wear a safety helmet, okay. So this particular safety helmet, you know, they have a requirement, okay. First of all, okay. It must be able to withstand a certain level of compact. No, you know when collision happen, you know something will be banging on something. You know something will be damaged. That hopefully is not the head. Okay, so it must be able to has a certain level of hardness. Okay, impact strength, so that the helmet will not break. However, if the neck break, that one we cannot do anything. Okay, we don't have a neck protector. Okay, but the head is still there. Okay, in the end, that's the that's the idea. All right. So um, other than that, okay. So it give you a certain like uh, quality finishes. Okay, like for some of the products. Okay, the material will provide something like shiny surface. It doesn't oxidize easier. You know, after you wear for one year and then your 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 helmet start to, you know, if you go and scratch it, there will be powdering, you know, all sort of powder start coming off. Then you know that that particular plastic might already gone through a certain oxidation level uh, process, process that interacts, you know, or reaction with the sunlight, you know, ultraviolet, you know, and so on that damages the material already. So you don't know that as well. Okay, like for example, the, the smartphone that you, you are using, they claim that they are using it for uh, aluminium alloy, you know, to, to actually make it, you know, after you use for one year, you know, it starts, you know, like rusting, you know, the colors start to peel off, you know, and so on. Uh, it, it wouldn't be nice to look at it even, right? Because you, if, if you know, some, something is happened, uh, quite oftenly happened because there's, uh, Everybody's using condition might be different, right? Some people they tend to have a very sweaty hand. Okay. The hands sweat easily. So the 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 the, the phone basically exposed to all sorts of uh, mineral, you know, everything from your sweat, you know, and so on. It reacts with each other. Okay. So in the end, it might cause the surface of the of the phone, you know, bodies, you know, and so on. Not so nice after using it, you know, the chromium uh, plating, the chrome plating basically all came off, you know, and so on. You start to see the parents' materials, color, you know, and so on. It might not be looking so nice. 
is just as if you know it's been uh, it just it just hurt the eyes you know when looking at it all right so in the end you might have a certain like bad experience in using it that particular products and the worst case scenario is if you have tried if you say okay i don't want to try this anymore i do not want to buy iphone anymore let's try huawei so in the end you found that huawei actually is a nicer phone so iphone basically iphone basically will be losing you as a customer as just like maybe forever okay because due to owing to the better uh experience that you have with other product you no longer want to buy the previous version of products that you are having that experience on. Just, just like a few, uh, many, many years ago, people still talk about protons, you know, having, you know, the wiper doesn't work, you know, the, 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 uh, what, the automatic, the mirrors, you know, never, never, never got down, you know, the motor always spoil and so on. So in the end, is that so? Okay. Maybe it just happened with a few units of products. But however, the the saying, okay, the saying, no, the, the 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 negativity actually keeps spreading until now. Okay, is that so? Is that so that happened, you know, today with the new uh, X40, you know, and so on? No. Okay. So in the end, right, this is the few things, okay, that actually uh monitor or you should be uh, considering or take care. Okay, when you are choosing the right material. First of all, it's the suitability. Okay, how suitable a material is. Now, suitable in terms of in terms of weight, in terms of weight to strength to weight ratio, in terms of if you want it to be colorful, okay. So there are many, many elements that you need to look into in terms of suitability, okay? Suitable in terms of characteristic, mechanical properties, physical properties, chemical properties, okay? The weight, okay? The specific gravity that we are talking about, okay? So these are the things that, because it's going to affect the function that is going to use, okay? That's going to affect the products, okay? Uh, and then the also the processing of the of the material now if, if we we are talking about let's say we want the something like weight you know and so on but in the end okay let's don't use aluminum alloy as a, a casing of a phone anymore let's use titanium alloy okay it has even better strength to weight ratio is it suitable yes maybe it's suitable but it is logic or so on depends okay because in the end, how much are you going to charge your customer for your products? You can claim that you have a titanium alloy casing, you know, and so on. It is very durable, you know, very lightweight, you know, very strong, you know, and so on. But in the end, the price is crazy. Okay. In the end, you know, your brand name is not as huge as uh, uh, an iPhone, but you are selling more expensive than an iPhone. So in the end, are you going to sell your phone? That's questionable. Not to say that never, okay? But how likely will that be, okay? So you must think about the reliability. How reliable is that particular product or that particular material? Is that material when, let's say, the helmet that I mentioned just now, when subjected to high impact, let's say if somebody basically face an accident, you know, they have a collision, you know, and so on, but the helmet breaks. So in the end, causing the customer's death, you know, and so on. So what kind of image will that bring to the customer, uh, to the company? Okay, it will be a very bad negativity, you know, bad uh, publicity, you know, and so on. Girl, you know that particular brand. Uh, last time I, I I saw it on Facebook, you know, it, they, he died because of the of the helmet. The helmet failed. If let's say, if let's say the president of an American, uh, the United States of America, they have this uh, presidency's car, you know, and so on. So normally their car is something like bulletproof. Their car normally is like explosion proof. So let's say the glass that you are using, okay, first of all, it must withstand, okay, bullets. 
okay? It must withstand bullets, okay? So it must have a certain level of strength to do that. So when choosing material, it has to be very careful, carefully made, carefully made. The decision has to be very careful or else it won't or it just won't perform what is being expected, okay? So next we are going to talk about the manufacturability, okay? How easy can this thing being produced? Now you can have this, have that, you know, all this uh, strength, you know, and so on. And in the end, no way to actually produce it. Like for example, if you want to, if you want to achieve a certain high strength, high hardness, in the end you choose diamond. So diamond is one of the hardest, uh, if not the hardest, also one of the hardest material that is available. So if you want to drill a hole on a diamond, what are you going to do? You must use another diamond. Or you must use something that is uh, ridiculously hard, you know, and so on to actually perform the task. So is it possible or is it can be made or even, even possible at all to do so? Okay, so are we going to make it? So that even if it's possible, the cost, the cost of producing it, the cost to process that particular material would be very, very expensive. So in the end, is the customer going to pay for that? Questionable as well. That would depend on what kind of products are you making. Okay. And when we talk about processing effect, okay. So when you are processing the, that particular material, so will that be any effect? Okay. Like for example, okay, will it, let's say you have to melt the particular metal. Okay. So upon melting it, will it release, uh, let's say toxic gases. Okay. Well, let's say these uh, linas, okay. They are producing something like rare earth. Okay. In Pahang. Okay. So, how will be the effect to the ecosystem? Will it cause a lot of radiations, you know, and so on? How will it affect the ecosystems around that particular area? How will it cause, okay, the possible, let's say, the toxicity, you know, and so on, okay, or to the people living around there and not, not, and let alone the people who works in the factory? How will that be? Okay, that is very important, okay? And uh, we talk about the durability. Okay, so how durable it will be for your products? Okay, so back then, okay, uh, I still remember my grandmother used to own a fan, a tabletop fan, okay, which I think easily is 40 to 50 years old. Okay, so the whole body is made from steel. Okay, so I think uh, a few years ago when I, when I, when I, Recited her before she passed away. So I still go and press it and still working. Even though it might be a, a little bit slow and you hear the friction in between, uh, it's no longer good, you know, but it's still working. Okay. So in the point of, uh, let's say, the manufacturer today, okay, they would try to avoid that. That is not to create a product that can last three to four decades or four to five decades uh, long so that uh, I just buy the fan once and I will not buy, I will not be buying another fan for the next 50 years, something like that. So very soon the, 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 the fan business will come down because everybody is still using their old fan, okay? Unless they are, they have more space of homes in their homes whereby they need more fans, you know, and so on. No. Normally, people nowadays, okay, they will change their product in two to three years' time. Even for hand, for smartphone nowadays, right? Okay. I still have a backup phone, okay? And that back backup phone is still working fine. Okay. So, why I need to change a new phone? Eh, because my hands start to get itchy. Okay. When I go to supermarkets, you know, hypermarkets, you know, when I pass by some uh, smart sh uh, smartphone shops, you know, and so on. So I'll go there and uh, have a touch on this uh, new devices. Oh, this one's very fast, huh? very impressive. You know, you see how the how smooth is being swiped. You know, left to right, right, left to right. You know, and so on. You know, when browsing is fast, you know, and fast. You know, because obviously the processor is better. The RAM, you know, got more RAM. You know, got more 
ROM, you know, and so on, better graphics, you know, better display, okay, better brightness, you know, and so on and so forth. So I, I, I was tempted to get a new one, but my still my, my old one is still working. And in the end, I will buy a new one because just that I want to change it. It's just like it's just like when I'm uh when the other day I I came across this brand called Nothing Ear One, I believe I shared in the group that I was so impressed that the designs looks really good. And it suddenly makes me like I want to own one. Even though I already have two okay, wireless earphones. Okay? One one AirPod Pro and then one uh, the Sony XM3. Okay? So for different purpose, for normal class, you know, webinar, you know, meetings you know, and so on, I'll use my AirPod Pro. But for listening to songs, I'll listen, I'll, I'll go for my XM3, right? Different purpose. Uh, there are reasons for that. Okay, but, but then the, the urge of want to have more is always there. I was tempted by the design. I was so impressed by that. Okay, it's no longer you know, white color, red color, you know, and so on. It's transparent. Okay, and uh, whatever inside there is being hide very well. You do not see the PCB. You do not see the wire, you know, or the glue stain, you know, on the on the earphone, but from the picture of it. All right. So I was tempted. All right, but then uh, in the end, I decided not to buy it because uh, I heard that the AirPod Pro Two is coming. All right, so that is a personal's uh, choice of products, you know, either you want it, how bad you want it, you know, and so on. But first of all, these uh, particular products basically they always come out with a new design, new update, you know, new technologies, you know, and so on. It makes you want to own a new product, want to change your existing product, even though my, my earphone is working very well right now, but still, I will be tempted to change it. Just recently, I just I just purchased the uh, iPhone 13 Pro Max, okay? Even though my iPhone 10s Max is still working fine, okay? It's still working very fast, you know, and so on. Just like the first day I, when I purchased it, okay? So, but still I change it. Uh, I'll, I'll be starting, I know it's excuse. I mean, uh, yeah, my old phone, no, 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 5G. Uh, yeah, my old phone, uh, the, the camera is not so good. Uh, my old phone, I've been carrying for three years already, you know, all right, that's you one, all right. So that's my weaknesses as well when it comes to purchasing things, all right. All right, so durability. So a lot of people, okay, even though we don't need that, okay, and as desperate as we want it, okay, we actually do not need that much of durability. Okay, uh, but then we would like to have it, okay, because we just do not know. I do not want my phone to spoil after one year, or even two years, or even three years. I rather change it when it's still in good condition. That's because I want to change it, not because I was forced to change it because already spoiled. I don't want that. Okay, so that's why. Uh, like I say, it has to be reasonable. Every level has to be reasonable. Okay, reasonable level of durability. How reasonable? How reasonable is reasonable? Okay, how manufacturability is manufacturability? How reliable is reliable? Okay, how suitable is suitable? That one depends on personal. Okay, and then another one is availability. Now, when it talks about availability, let's say if you have a plant in Johor okay, and in making, let's say, or uh, some uh, electronics products, all right? So, first of all, most of this material that you purchase, okay, ideally must be obtainable from Johor okay? If possible, you get all your local supplier that can supply you the raw material parts, you know, and everything from Johor Bahru. Simply because I do not have to stock up a lot of raw material. When I need the material, I just give them a call. You know, I just make an order. It will be available to me, okay? In a matter of just probably 
If I order it now, probably tomorrow or day after tomorrow, I'll get it. Okay? Even if I am in urgent need, okay, I can go to the factory and pick up or they can send, they can hand carry it to the our factory or to our uh, company to do a personal delivery because of this uh, urgent need, special case, right? Okay, so if it's not available in Johor Bahru, okay, let's look a bit wider. Let's say, is it available in Johor? Okay, like, let's say like Kluang, let's say like uh, Mua, Kota Pahat, you know, and so on. Uh, no. Okay, let's look a little bit further. Is it available in Melaka, Negeri Sembilan, Kuala Lumpur, Selangor, or Pahang? No. And what if uh, Perlis, Penang, Kedah, okay, Perak, Terengganu, Kelantan? No. How about Sabah, Sarawak? Still no. Then you have to move further away. How about Southeast Asia? No. How about Asia? No. Then you have to widen the scope. You know, like Russia, India, China, uh, no, uh, Russia, India, you know, Europe, you know, Middle East, you know, and so on and so forth. You have to look even further away. Now, let's say the material that you choose is only available in Brazil, South America. Now, nothing wrong with that, okay? Because some of the special, some of the special material actually is a very a risk, uh, not to say it's very limited. All right, so not every country basically selling it. Okay, not every company basically selling it. So you have to purchase it from overseas and maybe delivery by cargo. Now, what if this cargo actually take let's say one month to arrive Malaysia? Okay. So, because it has to stop at a lot of these uh, ports, you know, and so on to drop off some other people's things, you know, not only you order it, unless you order the whole whole cargo, you know, everything is yours, then, okay, this, they'll make a straight, straight, you know, from Brazil to Malaysia without stopping, you know, at anywhere. All right. But what if, you know, in the middle of somewhere, middle of the sea, you know, and then it, bang on something, you know, sing, just like the Titanic does. Tenggelam. Now, I know it was covered by insurance. You are not making losses, okay? Because it will be well covered. The insurance company will have to pay you back the money, you know, and so on. But what about this delay that will cause? The consequences is that your production will be running out of material because you are you need that particular material to run your production. So when that particular material ran out, means that your production has to stop. When the production stop, means that all your all your workers, you know, everything actually you have to pay them. Not to say that okay, now we don't have the material, so everybody go home, yeah. So your uh, since you are not working. So your pay will be KIV as well. So we are not going to pay you until uh, further notice. So when we need you, we'll call you back. No, we can't do that. It's against the law, okay? Because they were signed to the company. Either with or without production, you have to pay them monthly, okay? They're paying their wages, okay? Their salary, gaji. You have to pay them for that, okay? So all you know in the end, all right? So... Either you are running your production or not running your production, you have to pay that. We call that a capital. Either you run your production or not running your production, also, okay, all your electrical bills or your aircons or your everything, also, you need to pay it. You need to own the aircon too, okay? You need to own the electric electricity, you know, and so on, even with or without producing the products. So in the end, who's going to bear all these costs? You, okay? Because selling or not, the worker has to come. They came already. You have to pay them. You have nothing to produce. That's your problem. That's your mismanagement. You don't have the product for me to... You don't have the process. You don't have the product. You don't have the component for me to run the 
production. That's your problem. But I already came to work. You, I came to work. If you have things for me to do, I will operate on it. If you have nothing for me to do, I'll just sit around. But meanwhile, you have to pay me. Okay? So in the end, <clears throat> the manufacturing costs also, also has to be reasonable. Okay? Because uh, the, as you know that the uh, more advanced material, composite materials, you know, and some of these material with the special features, you know, and so on, normally it won't come cheap. So who is going to pay for that? Your customers. Because in the end, it's going to push up the product cost because the manufacturing cost is going to go up. The cost of goods sold is increase the so if you if you're familiar c o g s cost of goods sold okay the cost for making that particular product basically gone up okay because of your choices but of, of course you you can choose the cheaper material as cheap as it can be but then in the end it's going to affect your quality of products you have some of the product you know when you hold it in your hand it feels cheap it doesn't feel premium. It feels like it's not going to last. No, you, if you have this kind of experience before, like for example, if you go to, like I, I say, you know, just now when I say, when you compare the Tupperware, you know, the, the, the plastic container that is being, that you can purchase from a Ringgit Malaysia tool shop, okay, compare with the brand Tupperware, even though they did the same thing, but one, you know, you feel like eh, it's not going to last. Another one is you you can feel the thickness, the quality from the weight, from the, from the surface finish, you know, from the, uh, and so on. You know, you, when, when you touch on it, you feel, you feel expensive. Okay. So the, 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 there are more and more, okay. Products basically is uh, available in the market. Like nowadays, smartphone, laptops, you know, and so on. There are a lot of brands that is available on the market, okay? And then uh, the, the market is pretty much competitive, okay? Because uh, in the end, okay, everybody is trying to produce something that is special. Special in terms of maybe quality, special in terms of maybe functionality, special in terms of, let's say, the... Uh, the the software, okay. Special in terms of let's say the surface finish, special in terms of the design, okay, and so on and so forth, and even some special in terms of the price. <clears throat> some of the product, basically, like for example, smartphone like Xiaomi, Realme, you know, even they can do the same thing. Just like you know, if for some people, for example, I'm using a Xiaomi and uh iPhone. Is that any any much any more different? Nah. For me, it's the same. All I want to do is, I just want a device that can, you know, that can let me check email, that can let me answer call, that can let me, you know, sometimes when I'm uh, having mail, you know, I flip through my Facebook, you know, that's all. I don't have it to be very high performance, you know, and so on, durable, battery lasts longer, you know. For some people, that is not important at all. As long as I have a smartphone, that would be good enough. I don't play a game, I don't watch movie, you know, and so on. Yeah. Sometimes uh, I do watch a little bit of clips in Facebook. That's all. Okay? For them, a uh, 600 or 700 ringgit phone and a 6,000 phone make no difference to them. Okay? So in the end, the cost that a customer is willing to pay for something that is also a drive for this... Uh, company or this original equipment manufacturer. That's why some of the company, they have a huge range of products. Like for example, Samsung. If you want something that is a few hundred ringgit, yes, we have that. One or two thousand ringgit, yes, we have that. Premium one, yes, we have that. Luxury one, yes, we also have that. So they have a wide range of product that suit every level of customer. So they are trying to increase the market share. Okay? They have been all sorts of level of phone. So they have to actually plan wisely on releasing the phones, you know, what technology is included, what technology is not included, you know, and so on and so forth. They have to plan carefully, okay? Or else it will be like, 
you, know, you yourself versus yourself. Okay? You have another brand of Samsung versus another brand of your Samsung. So in the end, the customer will be saying, ah, I buy this or I buy that. It's the same, same price, same technology. Some, this one is better. Some, another one is better. So which one do I want? So we do not want to have our rivalry, rivalry among ourselves. Okay? They want to fight Huawei. They want to fight. They don't, they, the last thing is they do not want to fight among themselves. So they have to plan properly. Okay, because uh, the customers, uh, normally they will, the customer nowadays is very wise, okay? They know what to choose because nowadays you are, the, we have a smartphone. Nowadays we can go to internet, you know, we can find, you know, information about how people, you know, use it, you know, uh, how their comment, you know, how they're feeling after using that particular product, you know, and so on. We are no longer, you know, like, hmm. We can try this. Uh, who knows? It, it, it's a good phone. We don't have to. But of course, sometimes this kind of review can be very biased. Okay? Can be biased because some of them is, you know, they are, they are Apple fans, you know, and so, on, and so on. Of course, they are going to say that the Apple product is good. It's the best in the world, you know, and so on. Is that so? Hopefully not. Probably not. Okay? Maybe not. It depends on what you are using it for. How are you going to use it? Okay, that's, that's the most important thing. Okay, like for example, when my daughter asked me the other day, you know, daddy, daddy, uh, you have two earphones, right? Why, why you need two? Like he, she got me there uh, in one second. And in the end, I answer her. Now, just like I, I, I tell you all, uh, earlier on, when I'm using it for work, for recordings, you know, for classes, I would prefer to use my AirPod Pro. And in fact, I put on my AirPod Pro most of the time, even answering call, you know, and so on. Because the, the sound, it sounds better, okay? For those who listen to my voice, okay? Those who chat with me, they won't feel like as if I'm talking in the toilet, okay? But if I want to enjoy music, you know, and so on, the sound qualities of music, you know, or movie sound, you know, and so on, yeah, I will go for the sound. So one is for work, one is for entertainment. So that's that's how I answer my daughter. So that 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 ex would explain how you, are you going to uh, use it? Like, is it is it justified if I buy a more expensive one or I buy a normal one? It also depends on your budget. You know, how are you willing to pay for it? You know, and so on. Because uh, <clears throat> because if if you ask me, if you ask me. Let's say, uh, uh, the phone camera, you know, so or so on. Wow, this one, the phone camera is so good. You know, if you really want and really care about the photo quality, you might as well get a digital camera. I believe. I don't believe that this uh phone. Uh, no, this uh digital. Uh, no, it's a uh, camera functions. You know, or the lenses. You know, or everything on a smartphone can fight with the quality of a proper digital camera. Nobody wins that. Okay? We are not yet there. Okay, I would say. We are not yet there. Getting closer, but not yet there. Most of the time, it looks nice. It's because they are using software to basically enhance the quality of the photo. Not that the quality of the photo is actually good, but it's it's not bad now, okay? But still, digital camera can do more things, okay? Can produce better, you know? Uh, you know, uh, like say, this quality, you know, and so on. More functions, you know, and so on, all right? Okay, this is from, uh, this is a comment from my friend, okay? Who actually is, uh, you know, photographer, you know, and so on. He is still using a very huge thing, you know, carry in front of the chest, you know, and so on. Okay, so rather than using smartphone. Okay. Okay. The next thing is on the waste elimination. Now, this is a huge problem, especially when you are producing with something that is so critically uh sensitive for example like high, high radiations high radioactive you know uh, highly polluted 
you know, and so on. Like for example, the current case that we have now in Malaysia is the Linas, okay? Whereby back then when the people or the politician basically approve that project, they're going to say, oh, the, this uh, company, basically they are going to deal with the waste, you know, from this process, you know, and so on. And all the waste actually will be sent back to Australia for process. And what happened after years of operation now is, no, the Lina say we didn't say that. Now, that waste doesn't belong to us in Australia. It belongs to you in Malaysia. You are the one who actually have to find a way to dispose it. So I can't remember who said that in the initially. Uh, because uh, one of the politicians said actually it's safe, you know, non-radioactive, you know, and so on and so on. No, my, my solution is why, why don't we move all the waste to that particular person's house and store at his place? Since he say it should be is responsible for what he signed, right? Oh, okay. But that's politics, right? So my piece of advice is do not trust politician. Okay. So I'm not going to say which party. I'm not supporter of whichever party it is. I'm neutral. Okay. So for me, it's like a good politician is a dead politician. Means when they are dead, then they are good. Not to say that they suddenly become good. It's just that they are incapable of doing bad things anymore. Okay, that's my point of view. All right, can be biased. Okay, all right. So, when we talk about engineering materials, all right, so next we are going to talk about engineering materials. So, we talk about materials and the selection of materials and the features, the function that is involved in the selection of material. So, we need to talk about engineering material. Uh, however, I'm go not going to not going to talk too much about this because I believe that you already have this subject, uh, three eight one three or something. Okay, material science or something, whereby you are exposed to metal non metal uh, non metal composites. You know what is metal com metal uh, material? What is non metal? What is composite? So this one. Uh, I will just uh, flip through very fast because it's not even going to ask in the test or something like that. Okay, so uh, some of the things that you have to uh, be more careful here is this. So, mat material characteristic. Now, this one is a tricky part because it's just like when you choose your girlfriend or boyfriend. All right. Okay, for ladies... I want my uh, future husband to be somebody capable. Uh, uh, must be taller than me. Okay, maybe. Uh, a little bit looks like Shah Rukh Khan will do. Okay, must be able to sing, dance, you know. Maybe not as good, but at least he's fun. Okay, or maybe you have this kind of character, you can have this kind of a characteristics a requirement that you need. Is similar to when you choose a material because there are pro and cons in this material as well. It can be like this, but it can be like that. It can be like this, but it can be like that. Right. For example, this particular piece of material is very, very hard, but it is brittle. Can, it can be bro broken easily. Yeah, very hard, okay? But it will not bend. It will break. Just like, for example, your uh, Godzilla glass in your uh, smartphone screen. Very hard. Not easily, you know, spoil, you know, and so on. But once it exceeds the limit, it will rather break rather than bend. Now, for example, the glass, the mug that you use for drinking, it's made of glass, but you, you, you can't just actually expect it to. I want it to be very hard, but in the end, it can bounce like a tennis ball. When I, when I throw it on the floor, it will jump, you know, bounce up again like a tennis, like a ball. You just can't have both. Okay, so it's the same thing with the material. Okay, 
it's not that ideal. Okay, maybe in future, yes. So maybe I can say the same phrase again. We were limited by the technology of our time. Nobody invented that particular uh, material yet. Okay, maybe who knows? One day somebody will, but not yet. Okay, so in the end, you have to choose properly uh, within this uh, mechanical, physical, chemical, manufacturing properties. Like for example, uh, the mechanical mechanical properties you have. How much strength do you need? Okay, so normally, normally we would like to study on how much strength you know. Like for example, when they when they when they design a smartphone, they will do drop test. Okay, they we'll take the they will take the smartphone up to like say one meter high. That's about our our high, right? One or two meter high, and then they drop it. Nothing. Okay. They drop it and see whatever abnormal things happen, you know, where else is break, you know, and so on. Okay. If they drop it from two meter, what well, the, the screen broken, the casing broken, you know, it all fall apart, then okay, uh oh. This level of strength might not be sufficient for normal users. Okay? Because we do drop our phone, okay, once in a while, okay, for some people. Okay, so maybe, you know, it just drop off from the table, you know, and so on when we are studying, you know, and so on when they push it and the, the phone, you know, push to the edges, you know, and drop. Okay, half a meter high. Okay, so we want that. Okay, we want this particular phone to be secure or safe, even if with this kind of uh, normally would happen cases. But of course, uh, there will be seldom, you know, seldomly you hear people drop the phone from, let's say, five meters, 10 stories, you know, that one is too much to ask for. You know, any, anything that dropped from 10 meters or five story tall of building, you know, you drop your phone from, let's say, I'm living in an eighth floor. So if I drop my phone from eighth floor, whatever, whatever phone, whichever brand also, there will be damages. Okay, because that's a rare case. Okay. Not, not so many people would drop their things from that high. And not so many things or even people can survive the drop. So maybe you can just say like, no, from two stories high. Yeah, maybe. Okay. From let's say like three meters tall, maybe sometimes, you know, like for people who actually work for servicing industries, you know, when they climb up the stair to service the aircon and the smartphone is in their pockets, you know, and so on. When they are moving around, the, the, somehow it got squeezed out of their pocket and took drop. That's about two or three meters high. Okay, they want their product to survive that. Survive that kind of fall. But if you drop a few more times, you will break. If you drop it, you know, kena pada angle dia, you will hit the right angle, you know, and something, it will break also. The, 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 the glass, you know, and so on, there will be damages so what strength level you want that one depends on the type of products that you are uh, looking for elasticity how you want your product to be able to have this kind of elasticity does it require elasticity if you want it what's the level of elasticity you are looking for okay the plasticity okay the ductility okay so you are talking about elasticity okay so it will go back to the original position. Right? For example, most of the phone right now having this kind of uh, aluminium body, you know, and so on. I believe that if you bend it over sometimes, I will stay there. It will not it will not bounce back to the original position. It happens when uh, iPhone uh, launches this uh, iPhone 7, if I'm not mistaken, 7 plus. Okay, the first time they came out with a bigger phone, or oh, is it six or so, something, whereby they have this uh, issue, especially at the button area, whereby uh, they found out that this thing will warp, warp, you know, after some stresses, you know, and so on. Okay, it's no longer flat. Okay, means that the elasticity, maybe it's not that good, or maybe there is a weak point during in the structure. Okay, of the phone itself. So, uh, what they do is, they basically, they improve the 
uh, structure. They add in extra pieces of, uh, let's say, uh, they increase the thickness, you know, probably they add the reinforced, you know, uh, pieces of metal inside there to hold it more properly, you know, and so on and so forth. That's what they do. All right. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So, fatigue level. Okay. So, uh, we are looking for how fatigue that thing is. Okay. So, for example, if I have a hook, okay, okay, for the cloth, okay. So, what I'm expecting to do is to hang a cloth. Okay, to hang a cloth after I wash it. Okay, so so I expect it to be able to last that particular level of weight. So I do not expect, you know, I use my whole body strength and I hang myself there, you know, and so on. It they definitely will not will not last, will not withstand my body weight. But of course, with the board with the shirt and provided let's say it came out from washing machine or either all wet or so. So there must be a certain, uh, let's say this uh, weight level, okay, that it can last. Like for example, some of the chair, plastic chair, they can last like up to 80 kilograms, something like that. So don't, uh, those with more than 80 kilograms, maybe you need to find a steel chair to sit on it. Or maybe you need to put two of the chair together, stack, if it's a plastic chair, you can stack two or three together and then you sit on it more secure, something like that. All right. Because you do not want that once you sit on it, that whole thing fall apart, breaks, you know, and so on. It might injure uh, the, the person who sit on it. That's a worry, okay? So there's a lot of, uh, whenever you are buying, let's say, the baby swing, you know, and baby uh, stroller, you know, and so on. There, there is a, there's a statement there, you know, more, less than, let's say, 20 kilo, less than 15 kilo. So if it is a big baby, or even it's already a child, Sometimes they want to play on it. No, no. Because accident bounds to happen. All right. So the bitterness, as I say, if you want to strength, normally the bitterness will be a bit lesser or hardness is high. The bitterness will be, okay, low because it breaks easily. Okay. All right. So the elasticity might, might not be there. Okay. So there are pro and cons here and there. You can't just have everything. Okay. You can't just have everything. Just like when you're choosing a girlfriend or choosing a husband, you can't have all the good attribute, you know, available from one lady or from one man. There must be a pro and cons. Yeah, dia bagus dalam sini. Yeah, she is good here and of uh, a bit lacking there, you know. So, depends on what you need. Okay? All right. So, we're talking about physical properties. So, physical properties, what, when we look at, we look at density, all right? So, specific gravity. So, that's going to determine the weight, all right? So, the specific heat, okay? The thermal expansion, does it expand, okay? According to heat, okay? And the conductivity, does it conduct electricity, okay? What's the melting point, okay? So, what's the electrical properties? Does it conduct electricity, Okay? What's uh, about the magnetic properties and etc. and etc. So these are the things that you might be looking for. Okay. So it depends on how, how are you going to use it. So for example, if you are using it for conductivity, resistor, connector, you know, all sorts all sort of things. So maybe the electrical properties has to be there. The conductivity has to be good. Okay. So it depends. All right. Chemical properties. Okay. So chemical properties that need to be taken into consideration, for example, oxidation, corrosion, degradation, toxicity, flammability, and etc. Okay. So another one is the manufacturing properties. Okay. Manufacturability. So how easy this thing can be produced. Okay. So some of the hardness, high hardness material is very difficult to uh, process because you need something harder to basically drill it, polish it, you know, to do uh, what uh, shaping or to even bend it. So can it be bent? Now this thing is too hard that it breaks. How are you going to expect it to bend? All right. So when you are trying to bend it, so most of the time it breaks. So means that it's not suitable to be used uh, for you to use that particular material or you are using the wrong method to produce. 
means that probably you need another manufacturing process, for example. Okay, <clears throat> since you rather break than being bent, how about I melt you? I melt you and then I pour it into a certain uh, mold and then you take that particular U shape, you know, or something. So I don't have to bend you. You form yourself. Just that I change you to liquid form and then let you solidify back to solid form later on. For example, a casting process. All right. So this is uh, the process 4.0s, so all this uh, process that is available. So this one will go through uh, this semester. Okay. This semester. All right. So, okay. So this is the same with this... Uh, Material selection, this one came out in your test as well, okay? Mat process selection criteria, okay? Normally, it works on, it depends on the type of material that you are processing, okay? Now, the tricky part here is, when you have a product, okay, you know what you want to do, okay? You either select the material, do the material selection first, okay? And then you do your process selection. You can also do your process selection first, and then you do your material selection. It can be either way. And for some cases, okay, in some factory, because all the facilities already there, even include the machines and so on, most of the time you already have the process. You already have the machines. You already have the facilities. So you must, but no choice, with no choice, okay? You must suit with what you have when even if, if even if you go to your boss and say, I want to buy these machines, you know, and so on, the boss say, no, we don't have budget. You have to stick with what you already have. So maybe we have to know our process. What process method that we have? What machine that we have then only we choose okay we choose this material. ah this material is not suitable to use in that particular process you know or some of the material is not suitable okay so i might have to go for another alternative all right so we have to think of the final required characteristic what level of uh finishing surface finish that you have want to have okay what kind of shape what kind of size what kind of thickness and the complicatedness of the products. So different process provide you different alternative or different outcome, okay? So the type of tolerance and surface finish requirements, limits and fits, how accurate it can be. Nowadays, we have the normal machining, we have nano machining, we have micro machining, okay? And so on and so forth. So the the, the more changge or the more highly advanced uh, uh, things that they can do or achieve normally come with a skyrocket price. Okay. All right. So further processing requirement, design and equipment costs, scrap produce. Okay. And then the availability of machine and expertise. Now, this one I experienced it once, availability. Okay. So back then when in the factory, okay, when I work, when I work there, so, oops, when I worked there, so, so I was proposing to purchase a machine from England, all right? So, simply because the brand is particularly a well-known brand and so on. Then, there come this, they, there come this one of this, you no, know, smart guy with an open and closed inverted comma, okay? Who suggests that we should buy the Japanese version? Because the Japanese version is uh, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of reasons you know, and so on. And it's even more expensive. Okay. So in the end, he actually gets this uh, lead on uh, bringing in the machine. Means he will be in charge, you know, and so on. So I just let him, since you want to do it, you do it. Okay. So in the end, <clears throat> This particular machine finally came in, okay? No problem. If you want to buy it, if you have the money, if you pay it, the Japanese definitely is going to sell it to you. Now, that's one thing. The second thing is training must be provided. 
Now, when we come to training, then everybody is having a good laugh. <clears throat> because the Japanese side, they are sending some experts from Japan. So they come to the factory, they give us lecture for two days, and none of us can understand anything. Because that particular person can only speak Japanese. And his, his uh, presentation, everything is in Japanese, slide is in Japanese, language is in Japanese, and the, the translator actually is uh, not so good. So there's a lot of things is not being translated properly. So in the end, nobody actually know how to use that machine. And it's been putting there uh, until the time I left the company is still there, not being fully utilized. Okay. Now, ability, availability of the equipment. This, this one thing that is uh, very important and essential as well. Okay. Okay. So actually what, what they do is that... Uh, okay. Okay. Okay, so uh, what, what happened there is that now for some of these uh, cars that, uh, that came into Malaysia market, okay, so for example, this uh, particular brand called Haval, have you seen that, kind, that, road, uh, that car in, on the road? Okay, this is from a Chinese manufacturer, okay, uh, the car quality I heard is good. Okay, but still, when I when I purchased my last car, I I actually consider that car. But however, due, due to this availability of the equipment, you know, expertise to handle the equipment things, I scrapped the plan because I'm worried that okay, now when the car you know is okay, that's mean driving you know it's okay, but if there is a technical technical difficulties for the car. Like for example, okay, something went wrong with the cars, you need to repair the cars. Now it's the dealer who actually sell the car actually capable of doing that. Okay, since the technology might be different. Okay, since the spare parts might not be easily available. Okay, so I have a friend actually in the faculty of mechanical as well, a school of mechanical as well. So last time he bring in a, a car back from Japan Okay, so his car is uh, the Nissan Cube. Okay, never heard of it, right? Okay, it's a very cute car. Okay, so there's one time he met an accident. Okay, somebody actually uh, drive by his car and then uh, smash his uh, side mirror. So break it. So to his surprise that when he want to change or even buy replacement for that particular part, even though it's a Nissan, you know, it's a Nissan. But just that, that particular model is not being released in Malaysia. So they have to order it from Japan. It took three months for the replacement to arrive. And to make it worse, they order it wrongly. When arriving, they order the wrong side. <laughs> that makes things worse. You know, you wait for three months and then in the end, whatever that arrived is not what you want. Okay. And to make it worse, maybe it's not even the current model, you know, and so on. So that will be a very, very big, huge letdown, okay? Because if you purchase something, okay, and in the end, you are not full, getting all the full use of it. So it will be very, very disappointed, frustrated. So in the end, I asked him, uh, he sees telling me, it hurt my eyes every time I'm driving my car. Uh, because of the of the uh, damaged side mirror, okay, that's yet to be replaced, okay. So think about it, all right. So it only, it also apply to us, okay. Apply to us even even when uh even when uh we are okay purchasing anything, you know, and so on. All right, like 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 one of my friend actually he purchased. You know, there's uh, this China manufacturer, they make a lot of these products, actually, they're mimicking each other, you know, and so on. 
they came out with this particular product you know that looks like you know let's say iPhone and they, they do not call it iPhone they might call it pine apple they don't call it apple they call it pine apple you know they put a nanas at the back there with a the bike you know something like that with the pine apple logo you know similar with the apple approach they can do that okay Okay, and then in the end, if anything uh, happen, then the probably highly likely there's no spare parts, you know, uh, the screen, you know, what can we do about it? The battery, nothing we can do about it. So you have to change the whole phone you know, and so on. All right. All right. <clears throat> the next one uh, is this uh, production rate required. All right. All right. When you have a different process, you know, and so on. So the the production rate is it okay, the amount of product that is, that you can okay potentially produce might be different. Some you can produce at a mass quantity. Some you can produce at a very low quantity, and some moderate quantity. It depends on what kind of process you are looking for. All right. So this one we will look into it more uh, further. All right. So you have this uh, overall manufacturing production cost. All right. Some, like for example, is suitable for uh, mass production. So if you want to produce just a few of it, nah, probably you don't have to choose that particular part because the setup cost might be too expensive, okay? Since it, since it is for mass production, all right? All right, 6.0, principle of producibility. This whole section, 6.0, you can forget about it. It's already removed from the syllabus okay but however some some of the thing we can we can uh discuss okay okay how come okay so so in this uh principle of uh, reproducibility all right so we we are looking for this uh, elimination principle for, for this, uh, sometimes if you look at A and B, right? If you look at A and B, what is the differences? A is more like something like more fancy, right? Okay, with all the groove, you know, and so on. B is like very plain, okay? Just a square, just a rectangle block with two holes, okay? So, so, so in the, so in the end, in the end, it depends on what you are do, using it for. Like for example, if this is a, an engine block, okay? If this is an engine block, just the casing of it, you know, what you have to do is to close it and let the combustion uh, happen in the combustion engine. And then you close the uh, bonnets, you know, of the cars, you know, and no, nobody is going to see it. Now, <clears throat> if it is for that, does it matter that it looks fancy? Maybe, right? Maybe some people would like that. Nah, I, even nobody would like to see it. I want to look fancy. Just like, you know, some of these uh, bras or underwears where people wear, nobody is going to see it. Okay? But we still want it to be, you know, specially designed with lace, you know, and so on. You know? Okay. Okay, that one personal choices. But in engineering perspective, uh, we can see that as long as as it serves the purpose, okay? It doesn't matter. It looks fancy or no. So some of the fanciness of the design, we can basically remove it. Because if for A, right? If for A, okay? So when we want to choose, let's say this, uh, uh, let's say to produce the group, you know, and so on. So probably highly likely we are going to need more times, okay? More times means that our production will be slower, okay? More times mean that we have to allocate, okay? More manpower to actually produce it. And then we are going to create more waste, okay? So, and then uh, since we are going to cut it into group, you know, and so on, so you see that two holes there, the two holes there is actually very thin cross section, okay? So they might be, all right, not so secure in terms of assembly. So in the end, it brings more bad than good, 
Okay, yes, it looks nice, but it doesn't feel that strong. Okay, so probably you need to go back and restudy. Does it necessary to be that fancy? So if it's not, okay, then just remove it. Okay, then just remove it and go for the B B option. Now, since nobody is going like, for example, some of this part like the tank, the the fuel tank of a car is underneath the car. You know. Nobody is going to see it. Okay. So how the shaft surface would look like, you know, and so on, the shaft shape, you know, and so on. Nobody is going to know. Nobody is going to look uh, as long as, you know, it brings out the maximum efficiency in the combustion engine or for your car. That is good enough. So that's why sometimes if you have a, a, a table in front of you, you know, and so on, now, on the surface of the table, normally it's very nice, smooth surface, you know, and so on. But if you, if you put your hand into the drawer, underneath it, sometimes you touch it and then, how come the surface is so rough underneath the table? Because it's just simply not for cosmetic as long as this particular wood never breaks, you know, and so on. Because that particular part is not meant to be seen. Of course, you want to have that. Yes, can. If you want to have all the surfaces to be smooth, neat, tidy, clean, you know, and so on with a very good surface finish, yes, can. More cost then. And more money. Are, are you willing to pay more? Okay. So sometimes it's, it's like that. Okay. So sometimes you just have to simplify your design. Do not make it overly complicated. Okay. Because it's going to, you are going to make yourself troublesome. Okay, so you don't do that. All right. So this this one is this is not in your syllabus, yeah. No longer in your syllabus. The elimination, the the simplification. So however, I feel that is quite is rather important. Okay, so I just have a quick uh, go through and the standardization. So some of the parts, okay, even though let's say from models to models, let's say mm, Proton Saga, Proton Perdana, Proton, uh, what, uh, the Waja, you know, and so on. So some of the parts like the water pump, like the, let's say this, uh, power windows motor, okay, like the wipers motor, you know, like the bow and nut screw, you know, and so on. All they use a similar size, similar code number, you know, and so on. Even similar thing. Why is that? Because you do not have to make yourself too complicated. Okay? Because you do not have to make yourself too troublesome. For Waja, I need this model, uh, this motto. For, me, for the, other, uh, the other model, we need that particular thing. Some of the things we can share the same thing. Okay? As long as it serves the purpose. Unless you are going to make, you know, Purposely want to make more money, you know, more profit from it, you know, to force people in using that. You know, just like for example, for example, let's say if I want to upgrade my current iPad Air 3, okay, Air 3. So I'm using the pencil generation one. So if I want to upgrade it, I have no choice but to buy a pencil generation two. That's what they do to force us to spend the money. That's not a good thing. Of course, for the company, you know, if they have this kind of uh, huge fan base, then it's okay because they know you are going to buy it anyway. But for manufacturer perspective, okay, so normally they would like to make it make life easier for them so that they do not have to order various products from various supplier. They can order one particular motor and that this particular motto is going to suit various car models. Maybe a range of car models is using the same bow and nuts, the same screw size, okay, the same motto, okay, and so on, the same fan, okay, and the same spark plug, you know, and so on and so forth. You don't have to be so uniquely special for every single component, you know, and so on for all of your products because it's going to make your life miserable and troublesome, especially in the production. And even for the seller, okay, for the 
uh, four men, you know, and so on, they will be very headache, you know, for this particular car. There are so many models of moto I have to store up, I have to purchase, you know, and so on. So it's not easy for them to stock up. So you, you, you try to ask those who actually open a shop for this uh, phone gadget, you know, the phone casing, you know. There's so many models around, you know, of casing. So every model, you know, I, I need to purchase it. You have to keep the stocks, you know, and so on. And so many colors, you know, and so on. So it ends up the whole shop is also phone casing. Yeah, because the position of the camera is different, the size of the camera is different, you know, and so on. So... Uh, the size of the phone also is different. The color that you want is different, you know, and so on. So the variety actually is very, very huge. Okay. So for 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 a company, okay, for a company, normally what they want they want is to have a standardized okay component so that okay they can use the simple uh, approach whereby some of the or most of the component okay they use the same thing. Like at one stage, right? The uh, the what this uh, at one stage, right? Some of these car manufacturer basically share the same car engine. Like for example, Toyota Rush, and then the Toyota Avanza. Okay, basically they use the same engine. So of course, some of them comment that uh, one is all power, one is uh, under power, you know, and so on. But they use the same engine, and even they use the same structure. Okay, they use the same rim, they use the same tire. Okay, so these are the things that they can standardize. Okay, in terms to make their production easier, to make life easier, less complicated. Okay, and inventory also can be controlled. Uh, in a more efficient efficient way because you have lesser inventory to, uh, to to actually handle. Okay. All right. This seven point zero is definitely going to come out in your, uh, test. All right. Now, what did this uh, basic level of uh, manufacturing do? All right. So in this basic level of manufacturing, so this basically cover the whole the whole chain, okay, of a certain manufacturing from the first one, research and development of goods or goods design. So normally in in most of the cases, okay, manufacturing basically, okay, it starts with somebody coming out with an idea of a product. Okay. Many years ago, there's a guy called Mr. Job and his name is Steve. All right. He's the one who actually came out with the idea to put everything into one piece and they call it smartphone. Is it is the smartphone that smart? Uh, that would depends on how you put it, because if you if you if you would like to take each and every function out of the smartphone, actually there's nothing new in the smartphone. Now let me explain this. Now, we have calendar. We have alarm clock. We have a notepad, or we have a palm organizer back then. Okay. We have a PDF reader. We have a digital camera. We have a video camcorder. We have a phone. Okay, separately. So, if you talk about a smartphone, is there anything new there? Not really. But the smartness there is, all of these things is being put into one device whereby you do not have to carry like 10 device or so when you go out, you just carry your phone. Okay? So that's why it creates a lot of wow, you know? The wow effect. Wow! You know? So, but after so many years, okay, is there anything still new in the smartphone? No. I don't think so. After so, so many years, ever since the first wow effect, 
is there anything that's created another wow for us? No. Is there anything that is significantly new in the laptop, uh, in the in the smartphone? Not really. You just add in like the fingerprint sensor, you know, face recognition, better speed, better RAM, better ROM, a better camera. Any other things? Like maybe like hologram, you know, or something? No, not really. Uh, maybe that uh, the, 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 the new thing is that is that uh, the, our current phone has uh, basically is like you can use, for example, like, hey, Alexa, Hi, Go hey, Google, or like, hey, S-I-R-I. -I. I, I, I cannot say the, I cannot pronounce the S-I-R-I because or else something will come out from my phone. Okay. So that's the only thing that you have this kind of level of uh, artificial intelligence. And anything new? Okay, so the current is like the R&D is basically looking for something, always creating a certain wow factor. Wow, this thing is great. I want to own it. Okay, <clears throat> so R&D basically looks into ways of research in terms of research and development, either for new technology, innovativeness, Okay, uh, let's say creativities, you know, and so on. Basically, to come out with something that nobody thought of before. Or some of the uh, researchers basically to make a better version of what somebody else already got. Okay, so it would depend on the direction of the company. Because... There are two types of uh, manufacturer in this world. One is the uh, product market leader. Another one is the market follower. Okay. For market follower, they will wait for market leader to come out with the flagship products. Probably they will buy one unit back and then they will open up everything and look at it and study oh that's how they did it let's steal this technology and go to our go back to our lab and then and I'll, i'm telling my researcher okay they have that you know uh, you see huawei they did that did that, did that. can i steal this technology into our products but uh, without getting into troubles you know and so on so you think about it in another approach but Finally, we achieve almost more or less the same thing or even better things. Okay? So, it depends on how you want, how you want to do it. All right? So, normally, the market leader actually, actually is the one that is very stressful because they always have to come out with the new invention. Okay? New in terms of this, new in terms of that. Okay? Like, for example, the Huawei... Uh, they always come out with this uh, Kirin, uh, what, what, whatever chips, okay? And then the iPhone, they normally have this uh, atomic, uh, I don't know, 14 or 15, you know? Okay? So, it's kind of chips to perform better, you know, and how many nanometer or you know, whatever that can produce, you know, uh, that can perform, you know, how many percent better than the last one, uh, okay? But however, you, do, you still do not, okay, I know, you can run faster, so what? Okay? I don't need it to be that fast. Sometimes people might say that. I don't need that. My phone already fast enough. Other than the fastness, you know, and so on, what else do you bring to me? What else do you bring to the new product? That's what people are looking for because people are getting more and more dull. Okay, I know the new phone, new speed, you know, new RAM, uh, new ROM, better, you know, I can keep more songs, more movie, you know, I run faster, loading faster, that's all. What else is new? Convince me to change my phone. Other than, you know, I, if I want to change it, then, I, or else, why should I change? Now, that's the, that's the thing. R&D basically is looking for, because the next chapter we are talking, we will be talking about the manufacturing aspect on what the customer expects from a product, what makes customers okay, paying 
and get the products. That's important. Okay? So, in the research and development, normally people actually come up with a new design. Okay? So, design in terms of the outlook of the products, in terms of the technology of the products, okay? Software, okay? New software, you know, and so on. Okay? So, normally they will have these kind of technical drawings, you know? They have the circuit diagrams, you know, and so on. All right? So, they have to develop into something else, you know, and so on. So, Probably the next one, if I if I if I'm going to foresee the the smartphone technology is by the use of sensors in the phone. Probably, probably I can use my camera to on the camera and then uh, I just scan the food that I'm eating, and then it will be able to tell me how many calories will that be. Now that's one wow. In fact, uh. Uh, while thinking, right? And even <clears throat> if I'm going to scan my, let's say, material, I do not know whether this is aluminium or steel. It looks very alike without touching it. So maybe I just use my camera to scan it and then you'll be able to tell me this is aluminium U357, something like that. Okay? So maybe... It can be like that. Maybe my hand just uh, just need to touch on the, the, the camera, the lenses there. It will be able to read my pulse, tell my sugar level, <laughs> okay, or a blood pressure, okay, or my calories, uh, or my whatever, okay? So it can be that, okay? Who knows, right? So maybe right now, not yet, okay? So I know a lot of smartwatch is basically doing that. So can we combine the smartwatch into the smartphone as well? <laughs> okay. So that's something for them to think about. Okay. So in this uh, research and development and goods design, normally we are going to decide just like what, what where we are going through today. Okay. We are going through, they, they are going to decide the, what, what design this product is going to look like. Okay what pro material that is being used, okay? And uh, what level of technology that you can be used. Like, for example, you have an iPhone and an iPhone SE. So SE basically is, a, is a, like the more low-cost model. So they don't include that full version of technologies. You know, some of it is new. Some of it, they include the old, older technologies, you know, and so on. But bear with it because that's the price you pay for the products, right? So... They have to decide what package of products that they are going to give you, okay? And uh, what uh, package of product is still under development, you know, and so on. Nah, that one cannot, okay? Not yet. Not ready yet, maybe for the next product. Because they, have, they always have this ongoing technologies development, okay? In their laboratory or in their R&D department, okay? So, which I believe, okay? When they launch the latest iPhone 13, they already have iPhone 14 almost completed. Okay, maybe with, with a few details, you know, still yet, you know, finalized, you know, and so on. They already have the new designs, you know, and so on. They already being developed. Okay, so it's the same with all other products in the world. They always move ahead. Okay. All right. So other than that, the material that is going to be used, the process that's going to be used, you know, and so on. All right. Once they already decided that, okay. And then this uh, CEO of the company will start to have this uh, kind of promotion. Okay. In their, let's say, their conference, you know, and so on. They will produce, uh, they will introduce the product. This is our product, okay? Samsung Galaxy Note, uh, whatever, okay? So uh, then they will tell you what they have, you know, the new thing that they have compared to the previous one, you know, and then so that to make you want to buy it. So at the same time, okay? At the same time, once they are, no, because they are going to tell you this and that, they already have the prototype, okay? Then they are telling you it's available for sales starting from when and when. So, meanwhile, they already plan, okay, their second stage, manufacturing, planning, and equipment. So, they are going to plan 
plan based on what? Based on previous sales. Okay. For the last version of our phone, let's say, or our laptop, let's say, of our car, let's say. Okay. We are selling XXX amount of unit. Okay. So I would expect more or less about this same unit. Okay. So are we having enough capacity to actually produce it? If no, then how? If yes, then how? Okay. If no, where am I going to find places or anywhere or anything that I can do to produce that much? So maybe you say, okay, you need to open up a new branch to set up a new facility and you need to hire a new worker. Okay. So it's not as easy as that. Okay. It's not as easy as, you know, when playing game, you know, when you are building a factory, a, a, a machine factory, and then you just deploy and then you open up. Okay. So you need to look for the right place. You need to look for the right machine, where to buy the machines, who to buy it from. Okay. And then the worker you need to hire. Okay. After hiring, you need to train. Okay, you need to go through a series of things before they are ready to actually do or to work for you. Okay, then when this uh, manufacturing planning and equipment is ready, and at the same time, okay, the 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 other people uh, department actually have to do the same thing because uh, manufacturing planning also involves materials, material purchasing, you know, and so on. You know, like for a phone, they need to. They need to decide, you know, I need to print cardboard, okay, because of the packaging that we are going to use. We need to produce, uh, we need to buy this kind of trays, you know, there are tray design for the, to put the, 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 the phone inside it, the booklet, you know, the, the earphone, you know, and so on, the cable, everything. So everything must be cardboard. So who are we going to buy it from? Okay, so who is capable of doing this, you know, with the, you no. Know, a lot of quotations you know might be coming in all right so we might choose for the best one to produce it you know probably with the best price probably with the best quality you know and so on all right so uh other than that uh we are going to buy a lot of uh, raw materials so aluminium blocks you know for the casing of the phone all right so who are we going to buy it from okay so the materials or the resistor, transistor, ROM, RAM, you know, and so on. We must buy it from somewhere, from someone. All right. So this is very important. All right. Next, we are going to move in manufacturing and production. So in the manufacturing, so when things, machines are ready, workers are ready, and then all the materials are ready, the engineering support, you know, why the working instruction, you know, everybody know what they are going to do. Operator A do this, operator B do this, operator C do this. And then they start to have manufacturing and production, which is our third point. Okay. So this, uh, in this stage, okay, whenever a product is being patterned, okay, manufacturing product is planned. Okay. So the following step is to begin the pilot run. So normally they will do the pilot run. Pilot run is like, they'll do it slowly first. They'll start with one product. Move from station one to station two to station three to up to station N. At the end, the products is being produced. One product only. And then all the QC engineers, everything are going to go do all the in-circuit tests, final circuit tests, you know, physical visual check you know, and uh, damage tests, you know, and so on and so forth. There are a lot of things that need to be tested. Okay. Then you have this thing called the QC buy-off. Okay. Normally in the production, they have this thing called the QC buy-off. Quality department, they need to buy off this production line and say that this production line is capable of producing the quality that meet our standard. Then only they will start the mass production. So you start to pick up because the workers still need time to catch up, you know, and so on. So normally you are, when you are not familiar with something, normally you will do it a bit slower. And then once you're already familiar, normally you will get more and more faster. So uh, this is what we call as the push system in this uh, manufacturing. So you push. So normally you have a conveyor belt, one product, 
come and then you process and go and then another product come, another product come, another product come. Normally, the psychology is that uh, the conveyor belt speed will be adjusted to slightly faster over time. So the worker actually doesn't know. Uh -huh. That's what we do, okay, in, in manufacturing. So normally when the uh, initial of the day, when it's new, not yet, you know, so warm up yet, okay? So normally we set it at the normal speed, okay? Once, you know, the, 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 the thing in progress, you know, and so on, we will slowly increase the speed, okay? So that's what we do, all right, in manufacturing. So, all right. And then at the same time, uh, last but not least, okay? So normally this won't be the last thing that we do. Okay, it normally happen. Okay, uh, in a parallel session, normally I think for the manufacturing, planning, and equipment stage, they already did the marketing. Okay, whereby, okay, they start to have you now the the pre order things, you know, the Apple conventions, you know, or this uh introduction of this uh, launching of the products when they have all that. Okay, marketing already start working. Okay, whereby like for example, like my case. Okay, uh, my Apple Store already start popping up, you know the 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 new iPhones, you know the new uh AirPod, you know and so on, the new products, you know and so on. It's available there, so they need to do all the marketing. Okay, so in some section of the US, they need they also offer something like, uh, you trade in your old phone and then you get a new one. Okay, so with an extra of that much that much money, okay, you get a new phone. Okay, so it's a um, old for new. Okay, there's some some did that every year, so that's why there's a lot of this uh, secondhand phone I guess, flood, flooding into our nations, into into Malaysia. You know, there's those are from US, those are from anywhere because the high change over of this kind of old product for new products, uh, promotion. Okay, this is one do to keep on going. All right, well, some people actually don't mind that as long as I'm keep using the new phone um, you know, spend a little bit extra doesn't matter all right <clears throat> so in this marketing normally uh, what they do is they do the promotion all right so in this uh, let's say youtube okay let's say in this uh, facebook let's say in this their yeah, official web page let's say in uh, newspaper magazine radio televisions you know all these uh, conventional or non-conventional way or they can have road show, or they can have, let's say, in the convention, okay, whereby the CEO introduce of their new products, you know, and so on. It's like a it's like a talk show, right? So so all those methods, as long as okay, it cover as much as people as possible, okay, so that people would know that they are launching a new product. Okay. They are launching a new product, like like for example, when our protons actually launch their new product, normally they will have our let's say our VVIP of the country, let's say, I let's say let's say our uh, minister of uh, international trade, you know our MITI uh, minister actually go there and do the uh, launching of the products, or maybe they have our let's say the prime ministers, you know, and so on, to have a speech there, you know, very inspiring speech, you know, and so on. So, and then after that, you know, the launch of the new products, you know, let's say like, like the, let's say the Proton X, uh, I don't know how many numbers, right? We have the X50, X70, and who knows, X90 is coming soon, right? So, so this, this kind of thing actually will actually do the, uh, tricks, you know, to introduce the product to the market, introduce the product to our consumer. Okay, those who actually, oh, there's a new product, sir. Uh, okay, and it happens. It so happened that they might con, they might want to change a car during that time. Then they will know that there is another alternative that is available. Okay, for them. So that's the market marketing, and other than that. Okay, this marketing normally they came with something called this uh, uh, customer service. Okay, so this customer service basically they will handle all sort of complaints. Okay, all sort of uh, let's say this uh, uh, let's say this uh, defects product. Okay, 
So let's say like like marketing, right? Other than selling car, right? Like Proton, you know, they have this Eon division, right? So this Eon division basically handling with all the maintenance and repair of the car other than just selling. Proton is just making the car. Eon basically sell it and then do the repair and maintenance. So I believe that in this marketing or this Eon, normally what they do is that they will start to have this kind of complaints or this kind of uh, maintenance or repair, you know, because the car is still under warranty, right? So they will somehow gather some information. Okay, customer send back for repair. What's the problem? Normally is uh, this and this problem, let's say. The wiper motor is not moving. Uh, it happened again, right? So probably you will collect or you will gather some big data or some data that can feed back to Proton and say, look here. Over the last six months, we have how many, how many cases of the car wiper motor is not functioning. So you better look at, into your motor. Something is wrong somewhere because of the high rejection rate. Because the, the motor is not durable. So maybe something is wrong there. Technically, or maybe uh, quality... Or maybe something there's a lot of a lot of other things, maybe politics, you know, and so on, you know, cronyism, you know, and so on. Okay, so there's a lot of things that could be okay, the reason. So maybe, but it was okay, it was highlighted, okay, especially when you have this kind of data, okay, it's available so that you can do something on it. But of course, you can choose not to do something as well. Okay, okay you can say that okay, that was mine, you know, and so on. Uh, we change, we change the motto, that's all, you know, you can stick to that, no problem, but at what cost, okay, because that's going to, or might be affecting your reputation as a car manufacturer, in the end, people might have negative uh, impression on your product, nah, don't buy that car, no, wipers have got problem, you believe their engine got no problem, Maybe they, think, they can think about that. They, they, they might lead them to think about that. Okay? Just like whatever. Uh, uh, back then. Okay? Back then. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's uh, Samsung Galaxy 8, I think. The one that explode. Okay? So it, may, it just maybe happened to uh, just a few phone, But it already created a lot of kuha that... Now, if that explode. What about the other model? Okay. If you have the technical difficulties there, technical error there, now what about your other phone? Are you, you dare to tell me that no, no such problem there? I don't have, a, I don't have the confidence. Alright. So, so it's just like this. It gives it give people you know, the, the extra thought that mm, better stay away from that product first. Let's get some other products. Okay, and during that time, okay, is the emerging of this brand called Huawei. Okay, so ever since then, not to say that Samsung disappeared completely, but it does, they does suffer from this uh, issue and they lost an amount, a, a huge amount of market share to Huawei. So right now, Huawei is the largest uh, Android phone manufacturer. Okay. So, all in all, okay, in this kind of things, okay, there's no right or wrong in uh, making decision, as you know that uh, the acceptability, uh, the availability, the durability, you know, this and that. All in all, it's your product. So you have to decide what's best for you. All right. Um, I want to discuss with you on some other things. Okay. So before we go into, uh, because we still have uh, two minutes or so. Okay. Assignment. Now, just like I tell the other group, okay. Form a group of six 
to eight people first. All right. And what you have to do is find a product. that require assembly. Okay? It can be anything. But of course you don't find a car, you know, that 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 require assembly, you know, you have to assemble the whole thing, you have to draw the whole thing. No, no, no. Don't do that. Okay? Find something that is simple. All right? Just require a few parts to be assembled. Okay? Like for example, a mouse. For your computer, right? The wireless optical mouse, you know, or something like that. Okay. Uh, uh what else? Uh a dynamo in the bicycle. You know, the dynamo, the thing that moves, you know, to create to 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 generate the electricity, okay, to light up your light bulb, you know, the, the light in your bicycle. Okay, so those kind of things. Okay, so what you have to do is that you find this okay, member first. Six to eight people, okay. So, uh, so normally the more head is the better, you know, because you have more time, more people to do the research or find information, you know, and something. So basically, you have to focus on three areas one is on the product, another one is on the material selection, another one is on the process selection. So, these three particular products. So the product is basically you will look into the maybe you can introduce the product you know like a mouse what the mouse do you know and so on your technical drawing maybe it's like uh is there any special requirement on your technical on your technical drawing like for example what we have going to have later is called GDNT okay so is there any special requirement okay that is going to be needed for your products okay you need to explain that uh, in the safety effect or the safety issues, okay? So for this product, it need to be, you know, like this, like this, like this kind of safety, you know, and so on. So it's more or less about the products, okay? In the material selection, so you choose two particular material that is suitable for this particular uh, products. So another one is to choose two process that is suitable for this product as well. So it can be, okay, process first, or material first. So one, so either two here, three here, either two here or three here. Okay, so it doesn't matter which one go first. All right. So that's what I, I, I leave it for you. So in my next class, I'm going to explain more further about this, uh, about this assignment. So I'll give you the details and I'll give you a PDF on, on this uh, details of the assignment. All right. So that will be it for today. Thank you very much. So have a nice day. Thank you, Dr.